did a search the other day for, just read the code. I got over 300,000 results. Some of them were in developer readmes. I thought, gosh, are there people out there, developers out there, who believe their code is self-documenting? <laughs> well, this is my example of self-documenting code, a strand of DNA. To a geneticist, this is perfectly self-documenting. They understand these base pairs, what they mean, but for the rest of us, we need a bit of help, and that starts with a readme. After I turned in these slides, I had a beer with a consultant. He likes looking at open source projects. He looks at, at projects with good readmes, but the moment they say, just read the code, he says, next project. I'm Mike Jang, uh, tech writer for Forgerock. We make identity management software. We have developers around the world. I'm fortunate because they write great readmes. I still have to get them standardized. It's a job. Uh, part of my inspiration comes from the Write the Docs conferences. We're filled with developers who write, writers who develop. Put the mashup together, that gives us an attitude. A and uh, it's epitomized by our motto, docs, or it didn't happen. I paraphrased a bit. When you write a readme, write it with an attitude. Mix Sheldon Cooper's geekery and Jane Austen's empathy. Put it together and you'll have a great readme. Linus Torvalds, when he put out his first emails on Linux, he posed a need, he described a solution, and he did it in an elegant way. He showed empathy, people listened, our world was rocked and forever changed. If you're not comfortable with writing, stick with short declarative sentences. My software, verb, feature. Then you can explain how. Back in 99, some guy asked me, hey Mike, can I install this Linux thing on Windows 98? I thought, oh my God, I have to remember to put prerequisites in all my docs so I can point to it and say, well, you know. When you share your source code, tell them how to build it, whether it be Make, Maven, some Fortran compiler or whatever, because you know they're going to tinker with your code and try to build it the same way you do. Installation, you might have a dozen steps to install something. Odd, uh, Make it as easy as possible for your users. Put it in a script. Let them do dot slash install because it gets them to hello world and you don't want that to be complicated. Once they get to hello world, get them a step further. Tell them wh where to put their data files or what configuration to change. Make it easy for them to say, hey, what I, what I did is useful. Then you can let your inner Sheldon go free. Tell everybody, hey, my software can solve world hunger, or it can replace Oracle SQL, or it can do some other amazing thing. But if you go too wild, you're gonna end up with a wall of text, like this front page from the New York Times in 1912. I love the New York Times, but the way I read today, I couldn't get through that front page. Here's some tips for avoiding walls of text. Be sure you know what problem you're solving. Keep your important points at the top, and the way people scan documentation, their eyes are drawn to bullet points. Make sure they're clear and easy to read even if you open up in VI. Troubleshooting. Make sure you list all the problems you've gone through and all the problems your users have gone through. The next user who comes in sees a problem, sees it on your troubleshooting list, will say, hey, this guy's a professional, he knows what he's doing. In an open source world, you may have started by contributing to a project. If you're writing a readme, you're setting up a project and want to tell people, hey, this is how you can contribute. So who here loves open source software? <laughs> I'm not a lawyer, but if you don't choose a license, you're going to end up with a closed source copyright, and we don't want that. So who here hates upgrades? <laughs> Include a change log with your readme. 
so people can make their own judgments on when to, when to do the upgrade. Sometimes it's necessary. And that's 10 steps to a better readme with attitude, a mashup of geekery and empathy, living together in perfect harmony. <laughs> and be glad I didn't sing that.